Hey guys, I'm JC and today we're playing an old school boogeyman of commander, Memnarch. The aim of this deck is to ramp hard, cast its commander and then steal the board, all while holding up interaction for protection. If being an arch enemy is right up your alley, then make sure to stop by the channel where we have a deck tech for Memnarch discussing all of the included cards as well as the overall strategy. Let's see just how scary stealing any permanent can be. Alrighty guys, let's see what our opponents are playing today. We have Bruvac the Grand Deliquent, we have Mizix of the Is Magnets, and we also have Alicia who smiles at death. Alright, if we look at our opening hand, we don't really have any mana acceleration. I mean, Ancient Tomb technically does accelerate us in mana, but we really have no rocks, just a lot of counter magic, so we'll have to mulligan this. Alright, if we look at this second hand, it's not a whole lot better. Phyrexian Metamorph can become a ramp piece, but that really relies on our opponents, which... I don't like to do, so let's mulligan one more time. All right, well, this is looking much better. We do have to lose some cards, but we do have a Rhystic Study there, and we have some Ramp. We also have Interaction, and hopefully we can get to that Chromatic Ori, so let's keep this. And I think we'll actually bottom our Sculpting Steel here. Bruvac plays a land for turn, and that is it for their turn. Mizix plays their land, and they end the turn there. Alicia plays a tap land for turn, a Windbrisk Heights, so they are going to be able to hide away four. They can pay a white tap it, you may play the exiled card without paying its mana cost if you attacked with three or more creatures this turn. And that is it for them. Alright, we draw a Mind Stone for turn, so that's really good news. We're getting more and more ramps so we can get to that Chromatic Ori, and if we can resolve this Rhystic Study, that's going to put us in a really good place. So let's just play our land for turn, and we'll sit on our an offer you can't refuse. Ruvac plays a land, and now they cast a Wall of Tears. It has Defender, whenever Wall of Tears blocks a creature, return that creature to its owner's hand at the end of combat. On Bruvac's end step, Mizzix uses Brainstorm. It allows them to draw three cards, then put two cards from their hand on top of their library in any order. And that's it for Bruvac's turn. Mizzix plays a land. And that is it for them. They're just going to sit there with two open mana. Alicia plays a tap land for turn. And that is it for them. We draw a worn power stone. Okay, well that's good news for us, because if the Mizzix player is going to sit there with open mana, and potentially Bruvac may get to a point where they're going to be just keeping mana up soon, and if we feel like we can't resolve our Rhystic Study, which is probably going to be pretty important in this game for us, we can always go for our Worn Power Stone on the turn after next. So we'll start by playing our land, and then we'll try to resolve our Fractured Power Stone. Because if it happens that the Mizzix player does counter this, it's a very low chance, but there, there is every chance they could. I'd rather keep the Mind Stone rather than the Fractured Power Stone. But I'm sure we should be fine here to resolve this. And we're just going to leave it there. Ruvac plays a land. And now they cast Riptide Turtle. It has Flash and it's a Defender, a 0-5. It looks like that's it for them. Mizix plays a land. Now they start by casting a Desperate Ritual. Add 3 red mana. It looks like we may see Mizix come down here. Which will be actually good news for us. That may give us a chance to resolve our Rhystic Study, and it does. Whenever you cast an Instant or Sorcery spell with mana value greater than the number of experience counters you have, you get an experience counter. And Instant and Sorcery spells you cast cost 1 less to cast for each experience counter you have. And that is it for the Mizzix player. Alicia starts by casting a Mana Crypt. And next they cast an Elvish Doomsayer. When it dies, each opponent discards a card. And next they cast an Unruly Mob. Whenever another creature you control dies, put a plus one plus one counter on Unruly Mob. Now they play a land for turn. And that is it for them. We draw another Mana Rock for turn. So it hurts a little bit that we do miss our land drop here. But let's just hope that we can resolve our Rhystic Study here so we can start drawing more cards. The Bruvac player does have one open mana, so they do have a chance that they can counter it. But I'm feeling like this is our moment that we have to try, at least while the Mizzix player is tapped out, and while the Bruvac player is mostly tapped out. So let's give it a shot. It looks like that goes through, so that's really good news for us. So we'll just pass the turn from here and hope that it sticks around, or at least gets us a little bit of value. If we can get at least three cards off of it, I'll be pretty happy. Bruvac plays a land. And now they cast a Persistent Petitioners, which does trigger our Rhystic Study. Let's see if they pay. It looks like they don't, so we'll draw a card here. And we get a Liquid Metal Talk. Persistent Petitioners says, pay one tap, target player mills a card. Tap four untapped advisors you control, and target player mills 12 cards. And a deck can have any number of cards named Persistent Petitioners. And now they cast another set of Persistent Petitioners. That is going to trigger Rhystic Study, but they won't be able to pay. So we'll draw another card. And we get a Star Compass. So hopefully we see a land sometime soon. 
And that is it there for the Bruvac player. Mizzix starts by casting a Storm Kiln Artist that does trigger our Rhystic Study. They probably won't be able to pay here, so we'll get to draw another card. So we've already got the value, and there's the land that we wanted. Beautiful. Storm Kiln Artist says it gets plus one, plus zero for each artifact you control, and whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, create a treasure token. That is quite a dangerous card in any sort of spell slinger deck, so we have to get our act moving. Now they move to combat, Mizzix comes our way, understandable, and we have a Rhystic Study that's just drawn a lot of cards. And that is it for the Mizzix player. Mana Crypt triggers on Alicia's upkeep. Let's see how they go with their coin flip. They lose the flip, taking three damage. Now they play a land for turn, a hand wear battlements. So they will be able to give a creature of theirs haste. Now they cast their commander, Alicia who smiles at death. That triggers Rhystic Study. But they pay for it. Alicia has first strike and whenever she attacks you may pay white, white or black, black or any combination thereof. If you do, return target creature card with power 2 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped and attacking. Now they cast a Goblin Engineer, which does trigger Rhystic Study. They won't be able to pay. We draw a Phyrexian Metamorph. Okay. And Goblin Engineer says when it ETVs, you may search your library for an artifact card, put it into your graveyard, then shuffle. And you can pay a red, tap and sacrifice an artifact, return target artifact card with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Now the Engineer does trigger when it ETVs. Alright, let's see what they find here. And they get themselves a Sack Outlet and Altar of Dementia. That's definitely going to start to do some work, especially with that Elvish Doomsayer. Fortunately, we have a lot of cards in hand and the Rhystic Study has survived. And that is it for the Alicia player. We draw a Lightning Grease for turn. That is good news to be able to protect our commander, which is going to be pretty important here, especially with some decks at the table that are going to likely interact a lot. So let's start by playing our land for turn. Next, we'll play our Phyrexian Metamorph. We're going to have that come in as a copy of Mana Crypt. And then next we'll get our Worn Power Stone into play. That'll leave us with 7 cards in hand so we don't have to discard anything. It also gives us fodder for that Elvish Doomsayer once it starts getting sacked. And that is going to be us done for the turn. So we are quite set up at the moment, but unfortunately so are all 3 of our opponents. So it's going to be a case of who's going to be able to break their deck open apart faster than the other decks at the table here. And unfortunately for us, our other opponents are going to get a chance to do that first. Now Bruvac does play a land for turn. We might see Bruvac come down here. No, we have our opponent cast Drown Secrets, which does trigger Rhystic Study. Let's see if they pay. They don't, we get to draw a card. We get a Sky Diamond. Whenever you cast a blue spell, target player mills two cards. And they are just going to leave the turn there, holding three blue mana up. Mizzix plays a Besage who shelters all. So it does come into play tap, that it's going to allow any instant or sorcery spell they cast to make sure it can't be countered. Very powerful land in a Spell Slinger deck. Especially a deck like Mizzix, which does usually plan on casting big spells. But that is it for them, they're just going to sit there with open mana up. So I guess that they're going to be keeping that mana up because they're a little worried about us, and justifiably so. Now Mana Crypt does trigger on Alicia's upkeep. One thing I will point out though is I'm very happy with our seeding position at the moment. At least having the Alicia player between us means that if they cast anything too dangerous, the Mizzix player is probably going to have to respond to them first. Also having the Bruvac player in front of the Mizzix player means they are also going to probably counter things that the Mizzix player is going to do. So we are seated quite favorably in this game at the moment. Let's see how much of a difference that makes. Now Alicia starts by activating their Goblin Engineer. They're aiming to return their Altar of Dementia. That comes back to the battlefield. Now they sacrifice their Elvish Doomsayer. So each opponent is going to have to discard a card now. We'll discard our Star Compass. Their Unruly Mob gets a plus one plus one counter. And now they're going to mill a card. Which they hit a Bajuka Bog. Next, Alicia casts the Revel Arc. That triggers our Rhystic Study. It looks like they won't be able to pay here, so we'll draw another card. And we draw a Training Grounds. Okay, that's going to be really great for when Memnarch comes out. Rebel Arc's a Flyer. When it leaves the battlefield, return up to two target creature cards with power two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. The Alicia player certainly got some strong engine pieces on board at the moment. Their game plan looks to be humming along quite well. All right, they're going to move to combat now. We're probably going to have Alicia come our way. Now it looks like they decide to actually keep Alicia back. And that is it for their turn. Mana Crypt triggers on our upkeep. We'll choose heads, we win the flip, and we draw a Gilded Lotus for turn. Okay, so we've got all the mana in the world. And with the Mizzix and Bruvac player having all that open mana, we have to be really careful here in what we try to resolve. So I think at the moment we're just going to try to get a few more ramp pieces down. So we'll start by playing our Mind Stone, then we'll try to get down our Gilded Lotus. And that goes through. Now we'll try to resolve our Liquid Metal Torque, and then we'll try to resolve our Training Grounds. And they allow that to go through. 
All right, well, I think the time for us now is to sit back on our offer you can't refuse. Hopefully, we might draw into a bit more interaction. And we'll see what our opponents have for us here. Also, be interesting to see if the Bruvac player does activate their Persistent Petitioners on our end step. And who they actually target with the mill. It's definitely not going to be the Alicia player, because that's just going to fuel their game plan. So, let's see what happens. So, let's move to our end step. And the Bruvac player doesn't decide to do anything. They just move straight to their turn. They start by playing a land. And now they cast another Persistent Petitioners. That triggers our Ristic Study. That also triggers their Drowned Secrets. So let's see if they give us a card here. They do. We draw a 3 and Dynamo. Now they're targeting us with the Drowned Secrets. So we're going to mill two cards. Oh, a Consecrated Sphinx and a land. A Consecrated Sphinx would have been really nice. Now they activate one of their Petitioners, actually targeting the Mizzix player here to mill a card. Looks like they hit a Commander Sphere. Now they target the Mizzix player once again with another of their Persistent Petitioners. They get a land. And that is it for the Bruvac player. Mizzix plays a land. Now they cast a Seething Song that triggers our Ristic Study. They let us draw a card here. And we get a Mirror Maid. That triggers their Storm Kiln Artist. They're going to make a Treasure Token. That also triggers their Commander. They get an Experience Counter. We won't interact here, we'll allow that to go through. But now they have 5 red mana in their mana pool. They are tapping Besage here, so the next spell they cast is going to be uncounterable. And they cast an Invent that triggers our Ristic Study. They let us draw another card. We get a land. Storm Kill Nardis triggers, it makes a treasure token. Mizix gets another counter. And Invent says, search your library for an instant card and or a sorcery card, reveal them, put them into your hand and then shuffle. Okay, well let's see what they find here. They might try for a Jeska's Will. That will give them a bit of card advantage and a lot more mana, especially with all the cards we have in hand. That would certainly be a target that I'd be going for, but let's see. Looks like they get themselves a Cyclonic Rift and a Time Twister. And now they cast the Cyclonic Rift Overloaded. That triggers our Ristic Study. They won't be able to pay for it, so we'll draw a card. And we draw another land. That triggers Storm Kiln Artist. So before they get the treasure here, this is where we're going to try to interact. We'll cast an offer you can't refuse. We don't want them to have mana to be able to interact. Oh, and unfortunately for us, they did have the Force of Will there. They cast Force of Will, that triggers our Ristic Study. Well, now we just have to hope we get lucky here and Ristic Study draws us something good. And we get a copy artifact, unfortunately. Storm Kilnatus is going to make a treasure token. Mizix will get another counter. Their Force of Will will probably resolve here. I don't think the Bruvac player is probably going to interact. That goes through, and unfortunately, the Cyclonic Rift is going to bounce everything back to our hands. So only being on three lands is really going to hurt us here, so it's unfortunately definitely set us back. In response, the Alicia player sacks their Revel Arc. That triggers their Altar of Dementia. It also triggers their Unruly Mob to get a 1-1 counter. Looks like they're targeting their Elvish Doomsayer. No doubt they're going to sack the Elvish Doomsayer here to actually get the Time Twister out of the Mizzix player's hand. They also mill a Kambal, a Disciple of the Vault. There's some notable creatures. Now they do sack the Elvish Doomsayer. So each of us is going to have to discard a card now. We'll discard our Sky Diamond. Unruly Mob gets a counter. They mill some more cards. Now Storm Kiln Artist makes a treasure token. And that resolves. And our board state looks pretty horrible now. This is what happens when we do miss a few of our land drops. And now it looks like the Mizix player is actually going in towards the Alicia player. They probably didn't like that they lost their Time Twister there. And that is it for the Mizix player. So quite a strong turn for them, but having absolutely zero cards in hand now means that they're not as scary as what they would have been if they kept that Time Twister. So luckily us forcing them to use that Force of Will there actually ended up helping the table in the long run. So now my eyes are definitely on the Bruvac player and the Alicia player, both having eight cards in hand and six cards in hand respectively. Now they start by recasting their Goblin Engineer. Engineer triggers on ETB. And they find themselves a Soul Ring. And then they recast their Altar of Dementia. And that is going to be it for their turn. We draw a land for turn. So let's start by playing our island. Next, we'll play our Thran Dynamo. Then we'll play our Phyrexian Metamorph. We'll lose two life. That'll come in as a copy of our Thran Dynamo. Then we'll play our Worn Power Stone. And that is going to be our turn done. And we're going to have to discard quite a few cards here. So let's just order these cards in the order that we actually want to keep things. So we'll definitely hold on to Rhystic Study. I want to keep Training Grounds. We want Mirror Maid as well. In case we get the chance to be able to put two Ristic Studies out. We'll also hold on to Gilded Lotus. We'll keep Chromatic Ori. We definitely want Lightning Greaves. And then we'll also hold on to Copy Artifact. But the rest of these we'll get rid of. And we'll go to the Bruvac player's turn. They start by casting Court of Cunning. 
when it ETBs, they become the Monarch. At the beginning of their upkeep, any number of target players each mill two cards. If they're the Monarch, each of those players mills ten cards instead. Very dangerous card with Bruvac out. But unfortunately, they're not going to be able to hold the Monarch here for too long. And now they just recast their Wall of Tears. It looks like they are going to probably be able to hold on to their Monarchy here. They move to their end step. The Monarchy triggers, so they get to draw a card. And now we move to the Mizzix player's turn. But we do have to try to act quickly here while the Mizzix player is low in cards. Because as soon as they get access to one card draw spell, the table is going to be in a bit of trouble. Three experience counters does start to get quite dangerous with Mizzix. Especially in lieu with their Beseju. Now it looks like they did get something, and it looks like they're using Beseju as well. Now... It is a card draw spell, but it's probably one of the worst that they can cast with only zero cards in hand. That triggers their Storm Kill Nardist and Mizzix. It does at least get them another experience counter though. It says draw cards equal to the number of cards in your hand plus one. You have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. So it basically just can trips here. Now they're moving to combat. Mizzix and Storm Kill Nardist are both going Alicia's way. And now Mizzix casts Red Sun Zenith with X equals four. That triggers their Storm Kill Nardist and Mizzix. So they get another treasure counter and an experience counter, taking them up to 5. Red Sun Zenith deals 4 damage to any target. If a creature dealt damage this way would die this turn, exile it instead. It looks like they don't like the shenanigans that are going on with Goblin Engineer. Which I can understand, it is a powerful card. And the 4 damage directly to our face or to the Wall of Tears doesn't really help them a lot. As expected, Alicia does sack it in response using their Altar of Dementia. So they're going to mill 1 card here. And they just hit a land. That fizzles of the Red Sun Zenith. And now with zero cards in hand, that's going to be their turn done. Alesha starts by casting Chaos Warp, targeting the Storm Kiln Artist. The owner of Target Permanent shuffles it into their library, then reveals the top card of their library. If it's a permanent card, they put it onto the battlefield. Looks like they reveal a land, so they get to put that into play. Well, that does shut down their engine if they do happen to get into card draw. But at the moment, they have more than enough mana and experience counters to do whatever they need to do. And that is it for the Alicia player. So there should be a big turn for us. Even if the Bruvac player does have some interaction, they won't be able to stop everything we're doing. So we draw a land for turn. Well, let's start by trying to resolve our Chromatic Ori, because being able to use all of our mana, even the Colorless, to get blue is going to be really important in activating Memnarch's ability. Well, the Bruvac player passes priority there, so that's going to go through. Next, we'll tap our Chromatic Ori, and we'll try to resolve our Gilded Lotus. That goes through. Now let's cast our Rhystic Study. That resolves. Now we'll play our Copy Artifact. We'll have that come into play as a Gilded Lotus, just in case we lose the Chromatic Ori. Now let's cast our Mirror Maid. We'll make a second Rhystic Study there. So we're certainly living the Mono Blue player's dream here. Two Rhystic Studies always feels really good. And then finally we'll cast our Training Grounds. And with that all said and done, if we can hold on to our board state, I think we're going to be in a very strong position here. Mizix has no cards in hand. Alicia player, they may have Artifact Removal being in red. We definitely wouldn't want to see a Vandal Blast overloaded, but hopefully we can draw into some counter magic using our Rhystic Study, so let's just pass the turn there and see what happens. Port of Cunning triggers on Bruvac's upkeep, so we're all going to mill 10 cards here. Now they play a land for turn. Let's hope they haven't been sandbagging a Cyclonic Rift themselves. That would also be bad news for us. At the very least, we would draw some cards. So they just start by recasting their Riptide Turtle. That triggers both our Rhystic Studies, which feels great to say. We draw a Stroke of Genius, and a 1 with the Machine, that resolves, and now they recast one of their Persistent Petitioners, that triggers both our Rhystic Studies, they let us draw, we get a Doubling Cube, okay, well that'll be pretty much nearly game over if we get to our next turn, and we get a land there. And finally they cast their Commander, Bruvac the Grand Deliquent, that triggers both our Rhystic Studies, which they can't pay for, Bruvac says if an opponent would mill one or more cards, they mill twice that many cards instead. We draw an Emery, and an All is Dust as well. Okay, that's some very good cards there. Bruvac's going to resolve. On their end step, Monarchy Triggers, they get to draw a card. And that is it for their turn. But it looks like the Mizzix player is just passing the turn with all their mana open. So we know Cyclonic Rift is out of the way. That's one of their most dangerous cards already used. So it is only one card, but we do have to be careful. Not casting our spells willy-nilly into it. Now we move to the Alicia player's turn. And they just start their turn by recasting their Commander Alesha. We draw a Skyclave Relic. And we also draw a Swiftfoot Boots. Their Commander resolves. And that is it for their turn. Alright, well we've been able to maintain our board state here. Ruvax tapped out. Mizix only has one card in hand. And the Alesha player is all but tapped out. 
So we should be in a pretty strong position here to now dominate the game. So we go to our turn, we draw a land. So let's start by playing our land for turn. And let's put our opponents to the test here. Let's see if the Mizzix player does have any interaction in hand. We'll try to resolve our doubling queue. That goes through. And with that, it actually causes the Mizzix player to scoop up. I think they've realized how much mana we can actually make here. Hopefully our other opponents don't scoop it up here, but it does make it a lot harder for them to win now that there's only two people we have to steal from. So let's tap down all our mana. Then we'll tap our doubling cube. That gives us 40 total mana. So let's start by casting our commander, the big bad boy himself, Memnarch. Next, we'll cast some Lightning Greaves. Then we'll cast one with the machine, just so I can see if I can find an untap effect. That is going to be four mana to draw seven cards. Oh, and we get an unwinding clock there, so that's pretty much all but GG. But we won't cast that just yet. We'll start by turning Bruvac into an artifact. Now we'll gain control of Bruvac. So now Bruvac joins our army, and I think Alesha wants to join our army as well, so let's go turn her into an artifact. Then we'll gain control of her. Alesha just sacrifices her in response using the Altar of Dementia. So Alesha will mill some cards here. Cathar Commando in there, but at this point it doesn't really matter too much. So our Memnarch Trigger Fizzles. Then we're going to kick our Skyclave Relic. Before we forget, we'll put our Lightning Greaves onto Memnarch. Next, we'll gain control of the Court of Cunning. Just so we don't have to mill a lot of cards. And now we'll cast our Unwinding Clock. And with that, it actually causes the Alesha player to scoop up. So I think we're going to see the Bruvac player scoop up here pretty shortly after. We'll keep going anyway. And we'll just gain control of one of their islands in case they do actually have a Cyclonic Rift. And then we'll use our last two mana... We'll transform one of their last islands into an artifact. And after all that, that will be our turn done. We'll just discard a lot of lands here. They play a land for turn. And they cast a Cut Your Losses. Casualty 2, target player mills half their library rounded down. That does trigger both our Rhystic Studies. We'll respond to that. We'll float all of our mana. We'll use our doubling cube to double that mana. We'll draw a card. We get a Clock of Omens. We'll see what we draw next. A Palladium Mirror. And now we'll start taking our opponent's islands. So we'll just start turning them into artifacts one by one and then stealing them. Very thankful to my opponent for playing this out. A lot of opponents would concede by now. We don't usually get to do this with Memnarch, unfortunately. At least not online. I'm a little bit more forgiven in my local playgroup and with my friends, but... <laughs> definitely not an MGGO. So now we'll finally let that cut your losses resolve. That puts us down to 23 cards in library. We'll just let the mana float away. On their end step, Monarchy Trigger, so they do get to draw a card. And that is it for their turn. Court of Cunning triggers on our upkeep. So we'll mill the Bruvac player. It is probably one of the most enjoyable things about playing a Memnarch deck, is actually using your opponent's cards against them. So we'll just start by gaining control of the Persistent Petitioners. And we'll cast our Palladium Mirror. We'll also cast our Swiftwood Boots. Then we'll use our Doubling Cube, we'll double up our mana, and we'll use this Stroke of Genius to hopefully draw into some cards to help us close this game out quicker if our opponent does want to play it down to zero life. So we'll choose ourselves. We've got to be careful not to actually deck ourselves here. So we'll choose X equals 8. Okay, unfortunately, not a lot to be able to help us here. But we'll just try to get down what creatures we can. So we will play out Emery, which is going to mill us four cards. Then we'll play Silvermere. We'll also play our Clock of Omens. We'll just let all that mana go. Now we'll move to combat. Oh, but I accidentally <laughs> passed right through combat. That's a little unfortunate. So we'll just pass the turn there. We'll discard most of these land cards. Now we move to the Bruvac player's turn. They play a land for turn. And on their end step, Monarchy triggers. So they draw a card, and that is it for them. Court of Cunning triggers on our upkeep. We'll target the Bruvac player. Now we'll move to combat. We'll swing in with everything we can. It's probably going to be commander damage that gets it done, though. We will become the Monarch here, so that's going to draw us more cards. Now on our end step, Monarchy triggers. Before we do that, we'll tap down our Chromatic Lantern. We'll gain control of their island. And now we'll draw a card. We'll discard two lands. And we'll pass it to our opponent. They play a land for turn. On their end step, we'll gain control of that land. And now we'll move to our turn. Court of Cunning triggers on our upkeep. We'll target Bruvac once again. Now we'll move to combat. We'll send everything in. And on our end step, Monarchy triggers, drawing a card. And now we get an Ugin the Spirit Dragon. We'll just discard two cards. Ugin's actually going to help us close the game out quicker. So I'd say we're going to be okay. Unless, of course, our opponent has a way of being able to make us draw off of one mana. It looks like they've run out of lands. And it moves straight to our turn. 
Horde of Cunning triggers on our upkeep. We choose Bruvac once again. That puts them down to 32 cards in their deck. So let's just start by resolving Ugin. We'll uptick Ugin doing a Lightning Bolt to the Bruvac player's face. Now we'll move to combat. We'll send everything in. That knocks them down to 7. And then we'll pass the turn. On our end step, Monarchy triggers, we draw a card. That puts us down to 4 cards in our library. But notably, we did draw a Pact of Negation, so we'll have to discard some cards. And now it's the Bruvac player's turn. It looks like they're just passing it right over to us. And our opponent has called it quits after all of that. Well guys, let's go to the review and discuss what happened. So before we discuss the game itself, hats off needs to happen for the Bruvac player. In all the time I've played Memnarch, I've never had a player play it out like that to the bitter end, and I think more Magic players need to take a page out of their book. But as for the game itself, as I mentioned early in the game, resolving that Rhystic study would be key for us, and that was certainly the case this game. It allowed us to draw a lot of cards, and in a big mana deck like Memnarch's, we can use those cards to deadly effect. We saw this when the Mizzix player overloaded that Cyclonic Rift. The turn after, we were already back to double digit mana, still with a full grip of cards in hand. And once we were able to get those two Rhystic studies down, card draw was never going to be a problem for us again. But the key moment in this game was actually when the Alesha player made the Mizzix player discard that Time Twister. With all of the mana and experience counters that they accumulated, if they had actually resolved that spell, this game would have turned out very differently. Well, that's it for today's video. Memnarch attacks the game differently than most commanders and also forces your opponents to play differently as well, which, while not always enjoyed by all players, does certainly present an interesting game state. Until next time, guys.